Today I'm going to attempt to break the Jacobs taper. Here's an arbor with a 5 Jacobs taper to a 2 Morse taper. This Morse taper is commonly found in drill presses and lathes. I'm going to attempt to install this arbor onto this drill chuck and get it to run true. This here is a Jacobs 20N ball bearing drill chuck. I think it's the largest chuck of this type that they make. Right now it's fitted with a Jacobs taper 5 to Morse taper 5 arbor and I don't have anything nearly this big that I can use that arbor. If you're wondering why I would put such a small arbor on it, it's so it can fit in the tailstock of my lathe. This tailstock accepts a Morse taper too. When I bought the lathe, I got a box of drill bits. These drill bits are probably worth more than what I paid for the lathe itself. The reason I want to use this chuck on my tailstock is so I can use some of these bigger bits and not always have to use a boring bar. Some of these drill bits have more taper on them too. This one here is drilled so it can use coolant. There's more than one way to get this Jacobs taper arbor separated from this drill chuck. They offer some wedges like this. They would be bigger of course. And you can wedge them together on this shoulder here to separate the chuck from the arbor. I don't have the wedges I need so I am going to use a press. It appears that someone already drilled a hole through the center of the chuck, most likely on a lathe. So the hole would go to the arbor. Pretty tough to tell on camera, but I can actually see the tip of the arbor in there. I'm basically going to put a bolt inside here with my press through that hole and then press the arbor out. I'll most likely have a pipe or something of that sort on there to keep the chuck in place. I didn't have a pipe large enough, so I went with a bearing separator. Here's my rig in the press with a sacrificial grade 8 5 16 bolt. 3 8 would probably work better. I imagine that 5 16 will bend, but we'll see what happens here. Normally I'd probably throw a rag over something like this in case we have any sort of explosion, but for video purposes I'm just going to run her the way she is so we can see what happens. I got a bucket underneath it to catch the arbor when it shoots out. Here we go. That wasn't too bad. What a difference between the one it had and the one I'm going to put on there. An experienced machinist might say that this is ridiculous putting an arbor like this on a chuck like that, but I have very limited resources and I'm just going to run what I have. Here's a chuck, works high for the press. There's a hole through the center. I'm going to get both these pieces cleaned up here, see how they fit, and start thinking about knocking them together. My jaws are all the way in here. The pieces are cleaned up and fitted as good as I'm going to get them. Give her a little whack now. And we'll see how she runs on the lathe. Here is a Morse Taper 2 to Morse Taper 3 adapter and I'll use that to spin the chuck in my headstock to see if there's any run out. Here's the chuck in the headstock of the lathe with the Morse Taper adapter. It's got about thousands and a half run out on it, but for what I'm using it for, it's going to work. Looks better than my drill press, that's for sure. This adapter probably didn't help the uh, run out situation. Here's a look at this monster in my tailstock. Chuck up a drill on this thing. That's about it for now. Thanks for watching.